Hello everyone and in this lesson uh, we'll take a look at what is called as WAPS so V-O-P-S so we had seen the basic node for it last time and uh, WAPS basically stands for VEX operators so effectively what it is is just a node based way of writing VEX code so you're still doing programming but you're doing it using nodes so whether you've used Expresso in Cinema 4D or you've used ICE in Softimage, it's kind of the same thing. So we're just going to take a look at the basics of it and uh, see how exactly it functions. All right. So we're going to start with taking a simple grid. And okay, so before I work on this, let's do one thing. Uh, let me just do one. Thing. I'll, I'll make this 50 by 50 and a little smaller. And let's just keep it to one side and I'll start off with a simple add node. So the add node has an option to generate points, which is I can just come in here and I can click on point. And if you press, if you press this button, which is the point number, it should give you a zero, which means that we have one point. It will only show up if you switch this on. If you don't switch it on that there's no point there. Like by default, if you click on the information, you'll see that it is empty. There's nothing there. And then when I press I and then it'll sort of, you know, see now you have like one point. Okay. So uh, let's just, let's take a look at, at a very basic level, what you can do with, uh, what you can do with WAPs. So just type WAP and take the second one. It's called attribute WAP. Uh, and you will get a lot of them. As I said the last time, like attribute warp, point primitive, they're all essentially the same. They're just variations of the attribute warp, uh, just dealing with different contexts. So you can come up here and you can change the context. So you can decide that it should work on points or primitives or vertices. We wanted to run on points, so we'll keep it to points. All right, so I'll just connect this. And let's also do one thing. I want to see, I want to be able to see the position of this or the position of this point, uh, like written in the viewport. So we're going to select this and press X, which adds something called as visualize. And what we want to visualize, if you come to visualizers, we want to visualize the position, but not as a color, but as a marker. See, so you'll get, it, it shows two of them. I don't know why it shows two of them, but it shows you like zero, zero, zero. That's the position of it. If I adjust it here, you'll see that change. Like if I come in here and I move it, see, so what we're doing is in the, in the Y axis, see it's zero comma, you know, zero comma, whatever. Hold on a second. Let's come to the visualize. We'll say font size is large. Yeah, there you go. So it's zero comma, 0 0.12 comma zero. And that's essentially the value here. See zero, 0 0.12 in Y axis and zero. Okay. Okay, so this is basic. Now let's let's just jump into the attribute warp. So I'll just double click and we'll jump into attribute warp. Now what uh, this is essentially, as I said, this is essentially like a node based area for uh, building VEX code. Now you get two nodes by default. Okay, you have an input node, which is, uh, these are existing values that it can input. You can also get in your own attributes, but these are the ones that it is giving you by default. And then what you can at you can exit or what you can output to by default. Okay, so you can output to position, velocity, force. Like if you're doing particles, you can use these two. You can output to color, you can output to normal. But beyond this, also like if you have your own custom attributes, then you can you can uh, you can output to those custom attributes as well. And I will show you how to do that. But so what we're doing by default is uh, let's say that in this case, we want to move this point up uh, in the Y axis. And the way you're going to do it is we have our input, then we do some math or whatever in the middle, and then we plug it to an output. Okay, so fairly simple. So this is like your, it's sort of like the reverse. So this, so this is equal to that. You know, like when you're writing in code, so what we're saying is, uh, if we want to modify the X axis, you know, or the Y axis, so we're saying the Y axis is equal to, you know, whatever. So this whatever is currently what we have on the left side, and this is my output. So in, 
in this context, it's sort of reversed. So this is, this is the whatever, and then this is the output. So uh, let's do the basic thing, as I said, like, I just want to move this up by, uh, say, point 0.1. So what I can do is you get something called as a constant node, which is just a simple, you know, value. Okay? And then you can set it to whatever. So you can set it to float, integer, uh, you can set it to vector, you can set it to color as well. So you can set it to a lot of things. Okay, we'll keep it to float. And we want to add the existing position with whatever value is here. So let's just take an add node. And I can take the position. And if I directly connect this here, and then we can take the sum and take it out to the position. So we're basically saying that whatever is the incoming position, add it with whatever I put it in the constant value and then output it to the position. Now, if I start to modify this, it's fine, but it's changing all three axes because what is happening is this is position is X, Y, Z, right? So as I had mentioned before, like uh, the light green is, uh, is vectors. And then see, so it says velocity is vector or position is vector. And then the sort of bluish green is a float. So what we need in our case is we would like to only affect the y axis, right? Like if I look at this, so you can see that it's moving in all three axes. Okay, like if I, if I sort of move it around, see, we're not moving just up, we're kind of moving sideways as well, because it's feeding this 0 0.361 into all three axes. So what you need to do very often is uh, when you're, if you want to modify singular values out of a vector, like what we could do within the, like within the wrangle node was we could just type at p dot y, you know, and so, so at p is a vector and at p dot y is a float. Now, if you want to do the same thing here in, uh, in warps, it becomes slightly longer. So yeah, so the point being that sometimes when you want to write some really simple stuff, it is easier to do it within the wrangle node as we had seen last time. But sometimes when you want to build more complex things, then it is better to work with the work within WAPS. So essentially what WAPS will eventually allow you to do is you can, uh, you can sort of build your own deformers and stuff like that. You can also do a lot more at a basic level. Think of it as, at geometry level, we can use it to build deformers because you have ops available across the board. You have them available at particle level, at dynamics level, you know, everywhere. And even shader building is done through ops. So what we can do is in order to convert, in order to extract like X, Y, Z out of the position, you need to take something called as a vector to float, which is a convert node, which is like, you're going to take a vector value and it'll, it'll give me you know, three values out of that. So you can do it with anything. Like even if I connect velocity into this, it'll give me the velocity X, Y, Z. If I connect color into it, then this is giving me RGB. So currently if we connect position into this, we'll get, you know, X, Y, Z position. And then we'll do the addition with just the Y value. But now in order to output it, we still need to output all three values. Okay. So we are going to take a reverse of it, which is called a float to vector. So if I just like, if I feed all three into this, what you're going to get is effectively you took this, split it into three, fed it, fed the same thing back. And like, if I plug it in, it'll go back to zero because we didn't change anything in the middle. Okay. Now what, what if I just take the Y axis, plug it into add. Okay. So what we're doing is we're just taking like the X is going in the same, the Z is going in the same and just the Y axis, we are doing like an addition. And if I plug that into the Y axis, see, now we're only moving it vertically. And so once you've built this much, like, let's say if I come up here and if I change this with a sphere, I'll change this to polygon. I'll just make it small. And if I plug this in, okay, that's way too much. Okay. And you'll notice we can do the same thing. So if I can just move it up down. Now what you're doing is you're not actually moving the, uh, what do you say? You're not moving the geometry. You're actually just moving each point by, you know, whatever value, 
uh, you are feeding in over here. Now, why is this important? Like we connected the X and the Z because these are the incoming values. We only want to modify the Y axis. If I remove the X axis, then this is what happens. So everything in X, because nothing is feeding in over here, everything in X just flattens down to zero because it's, it doesn't have a value. And the same way, like if I take the Z and also remove that, you notice that all so now it's just moving in vertically. So which is why the like we're modifying just one of them and then the other two have to be fed in to maintain the shape of your object. Okay. So as I said, so, so the basic thing you're doing is you are just taking, you know, something existing, modifying it and then feeding it back to whatever you want to feed it into. Like if I change this, like let's say if I, uh, if instead of position, I'm going to take color. Yeah, so because there was no existing color, like modifying those things wasn't really making much of a difference. But let's say if I just take a constant here and I just feed it into color, you'll see that now I'm making it white. Okay. If I change this constant to uh, say three floats, so now we have access to RGB. So see now I can adjust red color or you know green color or blue color. Okay. So you can not only modify existing values, you can also build your own values. Okay. So you can do, you know, you can easily do stuff like that. Now, let's say as a final thing, I would also like to, uh, let's say if I generated an attribute, right, like a custom attribute, and then I want to modify that attribute. So what I can do is, let's say if we come up here and I'll take an attribute create and I'll create an attribute called A and we won't give it any value. So let's say I want to take, or let's give it a value of 0 0.3. And uh, let's say I want that, want to use that to affect the red color. So what you do is you type in bind. So bind allows you to import any attribute that you have, which is not listed here. So whatever, if, 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 if something is listed here, you can pick it up from here. Whatever is not listed, you can just bring it up using a bind node. Type the name of the parameter. So the name of the parameter is A. And if I take a float to vector, because we want to affect only the, uh, let's say we only want to feed in that 0 0.3 value in the red. So I can just take this in. And if I bring this out, see. So now whatever value I'm changing here, see that is what is feeding into the red. Or if I change that and I say, you know, let me like remove that and plug it into the blue, into the green, you know, so you can fit it into green. Or let's say we don't care about any of this. We want to modify the A value itself. Okay, like let's say I, I just want to add some value into that. You know, so I'll just take a float and I'll say, okay, I want to add about this much into it. So I can take an add, we can add these two and I want to export it out again to A. Like let, let me do one thing. Let me come in here and we'll do an alt square bracket and we'll change this to geometry spreadsheet. So we can see like our A value currently is 0 0.6, which is what I have set here. So technically if I take 0 0.6, then add it with 0 0.2, all of these should become 0 0.8. And the, so I have done that here. Like, so I have the A coming in and I've added it with this. Now I need to output it. So, but A doesn't exist here. So what you do is you take something called as a bind export and give it the same name. So it is A and we pl plug it into the input and you'll see, see, there you go. So they're all become, they've all become 0 0.8. So this is the absolute basic. Okay. So it's not like when we haven't really done anything with it, but this is just to explain to you how uh, and we can get rid of these two. In this case, we can get rid of these two. Like we just have this much. So this is just to explain of how we can take, how instead of like writing code, you can use like the node based area to build your own code. And if you want, you can actually see this code. So if you right click on the, like the exit, like the, like the final node here, and we can come to Vex options and say view Vex code. And it actually shows you the code that has been Type. Now this is of course a little too much, but you can see the values that have been, so we had a value generated called 0 0.2 and then uh, this is our attribute. And then we basically said like, 
a plus value, which is effectively, and then we outputted the sum. So it writes way more than you would traditionally want to write because otherwise you would just be writing, like if you look at this normally, you would write like at a is equal to at a plus 0 0.2. You know, that's basically what we wanted to write. But if you don't want to write code, this is another way of doing it. Okay. But of course, there are a lot more advantages to this. So we're just going to take a look at something interesting or something that you can do with this. Okay. okay, so I'm going to get rid of all of this. And let's say what I want to do is I want to generate some copies on this, but I want to be able to control the size of them uh, using like a gradient okay, or a ramp. So that's one of the interesting things that you can do with, uh, with uh, attribute warp is that you can generate ramps and stuff. You can generate like curves and color based gradients and then use those, you know, like the, the thing that you saw here with the color node, like you can see that there is a ramp here, right? So we, so we can generate stuff like that. Okay. So let's get rid of this. So let's start with the basic. So I'm just going to take a sphere. And I'm going to take, instead of a copy stamp, we're going to take a copy to points. And I'm going to plug this in. Now this is too big, so let's just make it small. Okay, and I'll just take a null. Okay, and shift W. Now the thing with copy to points is it doesn't give you any anything as such. Okay, what it does is it just like, you have incoming points, it'll just copy to that. It can transfer attributes that exist on these points. Uh, you can't control scaling or anything because you don't have those options here. Like the way we could do previously in copy stamp where you could do like dollar CD or whatever and make adjustments, you can't do that here. But what Houdini does is Houdini gives you a couple of uh, attributes which are not sort of listed, but uh, which, which if they exist will automatically affect copies. And one of the normal ones or one of the common ones you get is called P scale. So we're going to take a look at P scale. Okay. So if you just take at P scale, which is short for like point scale. And if at P scale exists, it will automatically affect the size of your copies. So if I come to, uh, if I take a wrangle node, okay. And if I just create at P scale, is equal to zero and you'll see that the points disappear. So they're still there. It is that because the scale has been put down to zero, it doesn't work. If I make it say 1.2, you'll see they become bigger or let's say if I make it 0 0.5, they become smaller. Okay. So I want to take, let's keep this to one for now and then we'll adjust it later. Okay. So what I want to do is starting from point number zero. So where, where is zero? So, so yeah, zero is there. So starting from here till there, I would like to generate a gradient. Okay. So a gradient that goes in about this direction from, you know, starting from the first point to the last point. So gradient is technically a value from zero to one. So we need to take, you know, all of these values and put them between zero to one. And there's a very common function to do that, which is if you take, the uh, point number, okay, which is the code for it is PT num, which is point number, and you divide it by the total number of points, which is num PT. It's a little weird. What this will do is it will always take whatever values you have and set it between zero to one. What's technically happening is let's say if you have 10 points, okay, so what we're doing is we're saying one divided by 10, two divided by 10, and three divided by 10 and all the way down to the final value, which will be nine divided by 10. And what you're going to get is you'll get 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to 0 0.9. And no matter how many points you have, like if you start at, like if you have a hundred points and we go all the way down to 99, what's going to happen is to be like 0 0.01, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to 0 0.99. And this is a great function to remember. Okay. Like this one, you should always remember because it's very useful. The only thing you need to do 
uh, is both of these are integer values. Okay, so if you divide them, you won't get a float. So one of them needs to be converted to a float value. Now, the way I usually do it is uh, you can take add pt num divided by like put in a bracket, say add num pt into 1.0. So what 1.0 does is it converts, you have to convert either one of them to a float value. That's all that you need. Once you convert either one of them to a float value, you'll start getting decimal places. So when you multiply it by 1.0, since this is a float value, this will turn into float and then you, then it will start working. Okay, so of course we're not going to type this, but in a later class, I'll also type it. But yeah, so what we're going to do is I, I want to set that over here. Okay, so I'm just going to take the WAP. Okay, we'll take an attribute WAP and let me jump in here. And just to show you, so we're going to take, so see there's numpt and the, sorry, there's pt num and there's numpt and they both are integers. Like if you keep your mouse on it, it'll, you'll see like it says pt num int, which is integer. So take an integer to float. See there you're going to integer to float. We'll convert the numpt and then take a divide because we have to divide them. So point number divided by total number of points. Uh, yeah, okay, don't, the top one needs to be converted. Okay, so just, yeah, there you go. Because you're out, if you'll notice, whatever is the top value is what works. Okay, like since the top value coming in is a float, then the output is a float. If the top value is an integer, then the output remains an integer. So yeah, just convert the top one. So this is good. And then if I fill this into color, you'll immediately see a gradient. See, so starting from point zero, which was zero and then all the way till the end, you automatically get a gradient. Now the next thing I want to do is I would like to be able to control this uh, with a gradient or with a ramp. Okay, like if you're from Maya, you've seen ramps, right? You've seen ramps or gradients, whatever you want to call them. So we can, so just type in ramp and you'll get something called ramp parameter. So ramp parameter, if you create it automatically sort of shows up here, see, like if I delete this, and if you come up, see there's, there's nothing. So minute there is a parameter in here, it will show up at, uh, you know, at the geometry level. So just take a ramp parameter, give it a name. Okay. If you have two different ramp parameters, they both have the same name. They're not going to work. So the name for each one has to be unique. Okay. Like not label name. Okay. So we'll just, let's call this curve. And I want, I don't want this as a color. Uh, I want this as a spline ramp. So you'll just get like a ramp like this and I can fill in this over there and fill it into color. Uh, why it's not working is because even though here it's showing you a curve at top level, the whole thing is flat. So just make sure that this sort of comes up. And so if I come to copy or, you know, see, you can see like it picked up the color. So if I come in here and I change it, see, you can see the color changing. But what I would like to do is I would like to fit this to P scale. Okay. Instead of, uh, instead of color. So let's keep it to color so we can see it anyways, but take a bind export type in P scale and plug this into the input and there you go immediately. Like everything starts to work. So if I take like, Let's take the sphere to be slightly bigger. And if you want, you can actually animate it. So if I just take like say two values here like that, see, and I can actually move them out. See, so I can just come in here and I can do, uh, let's take this, we'll do an alt click and an alt click. And let's say we come to 120 and I can move it out. See. Okay. So this is basic. I don't want to do that. Let's get rid of these. Yeah. Okay. It's still animating. Uh, delete channel. Yeah. Okay. Fine. This is good. Okay. So this is done. That's like the basic of it. Now let's talk about controlling this a bit more. Okay. Like let's say I want to animate it. Now what we can do is this is where this is the fun stuff, right? This is 
uh, this is where Houdini, because it gives you so much of access, becomes uh, it becomes very easy to animate stuff like this. Okay, so what I'll do is, uh, the first thing I want to do is let's just change this. I want to change it to like that. Yeah, so we just have like something like this. Now let's say if instead of the X axis or the Z where, where it's going, like zero starts here and the final point is there. Let's say we want it this way. Okay, so I can just take a, take a node called sort and sort is a great node. Okay, sort allows you to modify the point numbers. Okay, so if I just come into sort, and watch like if you if you watch closely you know like okay let's do it let me reduce the number of points here so we can see them yeah so we're going zero one two three four and if i come into sort you can change the primitive order or you can change the point order we want to change point so just select this and i can say by x-axis and you'll see like the zero shifted like everything shifted this way okay see so this is x-axis sorry this is z-axis okay where everything is see, zero one two three four is like that if you say x axis, now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is this way. Or you can do things like you can say proximity to point, which is essentially you get a point in the center. So you can see like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is going like that. And if you adjust that point order, you can see that little dot moving. See, there's a dot. If you move it, so wherever that point is, is where your 0 will start from. Now, how exactly is this affecting anything? is because let's take this back to 50 by 50 is because we are generating that gradient based on point numbers if we modify point numbers the gradient will modify okay like if I come in here and watch this if I change this to x-axis see now the gradient is this way or if I change it to uh, you know z-axis the gradient is this way now here's something interesting if I come in if I change it to shift and if I start to move it, you'll see like the gradient actually moves. Okay, so we're going to use these two things to start animating this. So this is going to be fun. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to change this to X axis. So the first, so we're going to take two sorts. Okay, so the first sort gives me uh, how I want to control the gradient. The second sort will be used for animation. Okay, so we'll take a second sort and all we do is change this to shift now we want to shift this continuously okay so what you can do is you can take a value you can use uh, you can use the time function or you can use the frame function so what does that mean so when you say there is a function called at time which is based on like default it is 24 fps so you're saying every 24 frames uh, is equal to one second right or you can do at frames. Now what happens is if you, if let's say I have rotation and I type at frames into it. So whatever is the frame number becomes the rotation value. So at frame one, you have rotated one degree at frame two, you have rotated two degrees, you know, like that. So if I take like, let's say if I take a, uh, if I take a tube, okay. And just to show you, and if I take a transform, and if I just come into rotation uh, in the X and I type in at the uh, F is capital at frame and watch this. If I, if I just drag this C. Okay. So whatever is the frame number becomes the rotation number. Like if I click there, it's not showing. Hold on a second. Window. Yeah, it's the live parameter display. See, there you go. Okay. So if I stop this C, we're at 135. 135 is the rotation value. If you wanted to go faster, we can do a multiplication. We'll say multiply by two. So it'll be faster. Oh, we'll say multiply by 10. So we do the same thing here where we can just come in here and say, we'll set it to shift. So it's going to, it's what it does is it just shifts the point numbers, right? Like if you come in here, it's not really doing anything magical. All it does is if I just jump in here, the zero, one, two, three, four, as you shift it, you'll see like you're effectively just shifting the points. Okay. So all we do is if I just come in here and I say at frame and if I come back to the grid and you press play, 
it is moving but it's very slow okay so we just need it to speed up so let's come in here and we'll say multiply it by 100 and if you press play now there you go you just did your first animation in Houdini and now it becomes fun so if I just come in here and I say by z-axis so you can control see now it goes this way if you wanted to go in the opposite direction just do a minus that will push it in the opposite direction or this is where it becomes fun you say proximity to point and you have ripples or this is where so if you want it in a direction you can say along vector and make this like let's say 1 in x and 0 0.5 in z see so now you can move in this way and this is where it gets better you can say random so all through so basically all of it through this one gradient which we are not even animating anymore and then you can sort of adjust it whichever way you want to and you can do it better right like so so let's say if i also want to use that p scale or this this gradient to start effect to generate like a color so i can just come into this attribute warp and i can actually like take another ramp okay take a ramp parameter because you do get something called ramps don't take that take a ramp parameter okay and we'll call this as color this will be an rgb color and we'll feed this curve into the input and that goes out to color and so what we should get is if i take this and i change this to blue see and change this to red now it won't show up or whatever is because these two values are going to zero so let's just take these and like you know bring them up slightly yeah so see so we have like some color over there i can like let's pull this in yeah there you go see so if i if i change this the first sort again to say proximity to point see there you go so if you want to do a manual animation you can manually animate you know the curve here but if you want like a repeating animation or something you can just animate this and then you can use this for anything like if i take this and i change if i take a font which allows me to type some text okay so if let's say i just take this and i'll type in say h and make it bigger so we'll say font size and i'll take a transform and i'll rotate it 90 and what i want is i want some points in the middle because it's completely empty so you have one option which is uh, you can scatter points into it so you can just take a scatter and it will scatter points but we can also do something else like i can take something called if i let's say i want to triangulate it so you get something called as a remesh so you can take a remesh you know just drop it and see so it will it will generate triangles for you and just lower the edge length till it looks dense enough yeah i think that's okay huh that might look interesting okay so let's just come in here and all we do is replace all of this with that right and if we come to the null see maybe yeah make this less yeah so we get like a blank space in there we weren't getting a blank in there yeah if you press play see and if I take the proximity point and I place it in the Z axis, like slightly higher, see, so the proximity point is there. So if I press play, so whatever, like if I come in here and I say a long vector, so you're pushing it this way. Or if I say uh, random, random looks nice. Yeah. So there you go, you can do motion graphics now. So anything, right? Like if I, if I, even if I take like a sphere and we'll just change this to polygon, make it about 10 points and I'll just feed this in here. Yeah. And if I press play, yeah. Okay. Very, very, the, the speed of it depends on the number of points. So the more points you have, the slower it will become. Yeah maybe slightly smaller 
and this is what you can do so if you want like more than one curve you know we can actually do something like this i can you know i can do that see so if i try a long vector yeah there you go see so i can sort of move it around the point is you can do some interesting stuff with this see it, it sort of stops there But yeah, we can do y-axis as well because now this is a 3D object, so you can do stuff like that. And as I said, like if you come to the sort and you change the negative to a positive, it'll go in the opposite direction. Yeah, so that's basically it. You know, so this is what you can do. So this is like a really basic introduction to what you can do with warps. Even at a basic level, you can do some fairly complex things. I wanted to make like I wanted to do like a tiny little project. So you know, like motion graphic stuff is always. Uh, you know, fun to do. So I just wanted to make something that, uh, you know, you can actually use somewhere. So, which is why I sort of went with this. So the, the reason I use this very specific function, like the, you know, the PT num divided by num PT is because this allows you to do, you know, some fairly fancy things. Like it's a fairly simple function, but if you use it, you can do some pretty interesting things. And then using the sort, because you're putting everything based on point number, you can very easily, you know, animate that value if you want. So yeah, so not only just using warps to do some basic math, but then also bringing in, you know, ramps so you can adjust, you know, colors and you can do those kind of things. Okay, okay so this is effectively what you can do with, uh, or like a basic introduction to the warps area. Okay, so starting with the next lesson, uh, I'm going to do a small project. So we're going to make uh, make like a fairly simple landscape. So we'll create like a small landscape which has flowers on it. So that'll uh, that'll help us sort of go through a project and also do uh, like cover a few more a uh, few more areas and also give you an idea of how you can do some amount of basic uh, you know like environment generation and things like that with Houdini. All right, so as usual, if you have any questions regarding this particular lesson uh, or, you know, any of my previous lessons or anything in general regarding Houdini, uh, you can write me an email or send me a message on Vimeo, YouTube, Twitter, whatever. And uh, I'll help out to the best of my abilities. And that's basically it.